Cells spend a lot of their time and energy making proteins in a process called protein synthesis. Proteins are manufactured in two busy steps, transcription followed by translation. In transcription, a gene on DNA is copied or transcribed onto a molecule of RNA called messenger RNA, symbolized as mRNA. The message is the gene's instructions on how to make the protein. In translation, the messenger RNA transcript, or copy, moves out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm, where it's translated with the help of ribosomes into a protein, or polypeptide. There's another molecule of RNA called transfer RNA, symbolized as tRNA that helps bring amino acids to the growing polypeptide chain. Translation refers to the fact that the chemical language of RNA is being converted into a different chemical language of protein. We're not going to be diving too deep into the nitty-gritty details of protein synthesis in this course, but it's important in our understanding of how cells work to have a broad overview of transcription and translation where these processes occur, their significance in protein synthesis, and what happens during the different stages. Transcription takes place inside the nucleus of a cell. In the first step, DNA is used to help make a copy of one gene onto a molecule of messenger RNA. The DNA molecule, which is double-stranded, must be unzipped or unwound to expose the bases A, T, C, and G that are used as a template or pattern to make an RNA copy of the gene. Remember the base pair rules of DNA are adenine bonds to thymine, A to T, and cytosine bonds to guanine, C to G. But in RNA, the base pair rules are a little different. Adenine bonds to uracil, U, not thymine, A to U, and cytosine bonds to guanine, C to G, which is the same as in DNA. So whenever you have uracils in a nucleotide sequence, you know you are working with some type of RNA molecule. At the end of transcription, the cell has produced a copy or transcript of the gene. It's not an exact copy, but it's close enough. This gene copy must leave the nucleus through the nuclear pores located on the nuclear envelope that surrounds the nucleus. The DNA molecule stays in the nucleus, the vault, but the messenger RNA copies must enter into the cytoplasm where they work with the ribosomes to make the growing polypeptide chain. It doesn't matter if the messenger RNA becomes damaged while in the cytoplasm. The original DNA molecule in the nucleus is intact and can continuously transcribe more gene copies onto more messenger RNA molecules and send them out into the cytoplasm for more protein synthesis. The chemical work of transcription is carried out by a collection of enzymes and proteins that help throughout the entire process. This is a DNA molecule, and this section of DNA is the gene of interest that is being transcribed. There is a beginning and an ending to the gene. The promoter region on DNA is the starting point for transcription. The terminator region is where transcription ends. These two regions are determined by specific base sequences that act as recognition points to tell the cell when to start and stop transcription. The major enzyme responsible for transcription is RNA polymerase. It has a lot of work to do. It first has to unzip the double-stranded DNA molecule in order to expose the nucleotide bases A, T, C, and G. One of the DNA strands will become the template strand, the pattern that will be used to transcribe the new messenger RNA molecule. DNA's bases are organized into groups of three, called base triplets. 
Here's the first base triplet to be transcribed. C in the DNA corresponds to G in the RNA. T in the DNA corresponds to A in the RNA. A in the DNA corresponds to U, uracil, in the RNA. The enzyme RNA polymerase travels along the DNA molecule triplet by triplet and pairs the bases together following the correct DNA to RNA base pair rules. The dotted lines represent the two or three hydrogen bonds that temporarily hold the bases together until the messenger RNA transcript is completed. The terminator sequence is then reached, and now the finished transcripts can move out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. When the gene is transcribed, not all of its bases correspond to a functional protein-making gene. Some of DNA's bases are found in between the gene of interest, and together they form what is called the non-coding region. So when messenger RNA is transcribed, it is edited or processed, producing a version that is like a rough draft of the messenger RNA called pre-mRNA. This draft has to be edited, similar to how you edit drafts of your writing assignments for errors and grammar, etc. In this revision, regions of messenger RNA called introns that do not code for a protein are cut out. You can remember their name by remembering that introns are in the way. Small proteins called SNRPs, which stands for small nuclear ribonucleoproteins, cut out and paste together the coding regions of the messenger RNA, called exons. You can remember the term exons because they contain gene sequences that will be expressed during translation and used directly for protein synthesis. So, in conclusion, here is the functional final draft of mature messenger RNA that consists of only the exons. It is threaded out through the nuclear pore and into the cytoplasm, where it will begin the process of translation.